Good evening, folks. Samson Jagors here, Growth View Properties. We're just going to wait a couple seconds as the last few people shuttle into the room, and then we will get started talking about 301 Greenville Apartments. All right, it looks like everybody who registered is here, and we are excited to bring to you 301 Greenville Apartments. This is a joint venture opportunity between Growth View Properties and our uh, good friends at Symphony Capital. This is a 200-unit light value-add opportunity in Dallas, Texas. And what we hope to get through tonight is a overview of our team. We want to give you a good understanding of the market itself the property overview, the business plan. We're gonna cover the executive summary on what it looks like to actually invest, as well as the sources and uses for the project and how we intend to execute the business plan in order to drive the ROI. And then we'll dive into the investment summary and talk about next steps on how you can invest. But before we jump into that, I must disclose and disclaim that this is not a solicitation to buy a security. It is a memorandum of understanding or a way for you to get familiar and up to speed with the actual investment. This is a 506C offering, so it is limited to accredited investors only. With that being said, investment does carry risk and is important for each and every person to take a personal account of their own financial situation before investing in real estate. Um, and with that being said, a lot of what we're going to be talking about in terms of the investment summary is going to be pro forma base or projections based off of historical performance. And history is not an indication of future results, although it is grounded in strong assumptions and information from our third party local market experts, as well as our own expertise as commercial real estate professionals. Uh, it is just important to understand that investing does carry risk. And so without further ado, let's jump into the team. My name is Samson Jagoris. I'm the uh, CEO of one of the principals at Growth View Properties. And I am a commercial real estate advisor, development consultant, and I'm the founder of Growth View Properties. And I am fortunate enough to work with two of my very good friends, Brad Penley and Justin North. I got my start in 2008 as a futures and commodities broker and spent 14 years of my career uh, investing as well as scaling up a large you know, multi-million dollar marketing and technology company. Along the way, I met Brad Penley, who is responsible for capital development. And at some point in time, whether you are an investor now or in the future, you will be speaking with Brad. And Justin North, who recently joined our team, is one of my best friends of 24 years. We played middle linebacker together in high school. He went on to the Marine Corps and then went on to Notre Dame Law and now practices law here in Colorado and he is now one of our principals. Now, Symphony Capital, Ellis Hammond, he is the founder and spent the last couple of years uh, doing a tremendous amount of work to really get Symphony off the ground, including over $100 million in commercial real estate transactions through the Symphony Capital platform, along with Jeremy Cisneros, who is uh, a principal in Symphony and an underwriter. He spent uh, several years in bridge lending with a background in finance. He's an operator, uh, helped run a couple McDonald's franchises that his family owned in Midtown Manhattan, and then has primarily focused on commercial real estate and bridge lending, where he closed over $450 million of bridge loans while simultaneously managing about $250 million in the bank portfolio. And the other partners of, of Symphony are Keith Meyer and Bradley Kirschbaum, who support in facilitating deal flow, communicate with brokers, and underwriting. So a tremendous team, very good friends of ours, and we're very, very excited to be pursuing this deal together with them, uh, particularly as you come to understand this deal as well as we do. I think uh, that you'll be excited as well. Um, and kind of the cherry on top to this partnership is Kathy Garrett and Asset Living. So Kathy Garrett is actually the person who helped us source this property off market. She's been in the game for about 25 years. She's a local market expert in the Dallas area, and she's going to be our eyes and ears on the ground to help us just execute the momentum plan and finish out um, the business plan as the current ownership is not fully maximizing that opportunity. And then Asset Living, who was ranked number four for the National Multifamily Housing Council's top property manager list, 
and has 35 years of experience is going to be our property manager to oversee the asset. So we feel great about this team and the business plan that we've put together. Um, and you can see some of the track record that we've had over the uh, last couple of years with the deals that have been put together. And you can go back, this will be included. There'll be a, a copy for you guys to download um, when you go to invest and get into the deal room. You can dive into these a little bit more. Um, but I think it's important before we jump too far into the deal specifically that we just take a moment to pause and talk about why real estate specifically, especially during these current times that we're in. Um, number one, low, low downside risk. So one of the beautiful things about real estate is it's not very volatile or liquid. So it doesn't move like the stock market does. And if you've been sitting in the stock market, you know what that feels like over the last couple of months. Uh, historically speaking, it has continually driven safe and consistent returns because it has an evergreen life cycle. So it's great for capital preservation. It's a great way to get passive cash flow. And it's a great way to make sure that in an inflationary environment that you're getting increases in equity and on a depreciating dollar. And if you just look at it compared to the stock market over time, historically speaking, the annualized returns on real estate have consistently outpaced the stock market. Now, most people might have said that wasn't true, but as if you've been in the stock market as of recently, you've experienced those large drawdowns, you know that net net on average, real estate tends to be a lot more stable and consistent than the stock market. The other thing that we love about it is it's just a basic fundamental human need, right? Food, shelter, and water. So it's not gonna be technology out of existence. You no, know, as long as there's still people and there's people moving into markets where they're going to need a place to live, we're still going to be in the business of multifamily and providing housing to people. There also continues to be a large flux of people moving into urban city centers, right? Which is one of the reasons why Dallas Fort Worth has been the largest growing MSA, is it's a massive, massive market with a massive amount of uh, jobs and opportunity and people will be attracted to where they can live and have a good quality of life and have a great job. We also continue to see home ownership rates decline in the core market that is the largest demographic of renters. And with the most recent increase in interest rates, that's making the residential housing market even more challenging for these new first time home buyers to make their way into that market because their money just doesn't go as far as it once did. So there's about 67.5 million people between 20 and 34, which make up the core demographic of renters in the United States. And 60 to 7%, 60 to 70% of those people rent. And that number is only expected to grow over the next 30 years, which you can see by the chart here on the right. Plus over 58% of the net renter increases in households from 2006 to 2016 came from boomer households. And a fun fact that's not on here, over 100% of the baby boomers will be over the age of 65 by 2030. So that means all these baby boomers that have already been trending towards renting and downsizing, uh, all of the boomers will be doing that as they exit the workforce and they look to a more a retirement lifestyle. And then you just have the simple fact that core commercial real estate has a better sharp ratio than almost any commodity, any large or small cap stock. And the only thing that's slightly better than that would maybe be government bonds. But historically speaking, it has the best total annualized return compared to annualized volatility because it's an improving uh, inflation hedge, as you can see here. On average, you're seeing the commercial real estate increase by 9.19% versus the CPI at 2.52. And historically speaking, real estate has had more up years and less down years than stocks or bonds. Granted, this is a little out to date, but I think we can all agree that since 2009, the real estate market has been on a terror, as have the stock market. And most recently, the stock market has gotten slapped very hard, and the real estate market has remained fairly consistent. And last but certainly not least, 
volatility. So volatility is the number one thing that we believe kills most portfolios. And as you can see here, the volatility rating on commercial real estate highlighted in blue is about 7.4%. The only thing that's better than that is a credit bond. And that's compared against high yield bonds, large cap stocks, small cap stocks, international stocks, and publicly traded real estate investment trusts. So direct owner of real estate still tends to be one of the best combatants against market volatility. And when you, th when you throw that in with the fact that between now and 2030, we'll need to build about 328,000 new apartment units each year to accommodate household growth and the loss of stock, which we lose about around 75,000 to 125,000 apartment units per month, then, or excuse me, per year, then you get a better understanding of why there's just a huge lack of supply. And we've all watched costs go up over the last year. We've seen the just general cost of real estate go up over the last few years. So building new apartments is, is getting harder and harder to do. So there is this sweet spot of, you know, buying properties and maintaining inventory and being able to add value to those in order to drive rents um, and do it um, consistently. And so that's, Literally what we're doing here on 301 Greenville in the Dallas-Fort Worth market. And what we love about Dallas specifically is that it is, has been the highest growing market in the U.S. period for the last 10 years, right? And just for perspective, Dallas-Fort Worth MSA has 7.75 million people. And when you compare that to Colorado, the entire state of Colorado has 5.85 million people. So the MSA of Dallas-Fort Worth has more people than the entire state of Colorado. And that's why it's growing so much. And that's why there's such a demand for attainable housing because there's just so many people there and it's not stopping anytime soon because there's so much vast space around Dallas that it, continued, it can continue to grow and expand. And then you throw on top of that that there's 23 Fortune 500 companies you know, you have basically the fourth largest concentration of Fortune 500 com companies behind New York, Chicago, and Houston, and a huge amount of just educated population and, and universities. So Dallas as a whole, you got commercial multifamily apartment complexes. Those aren't going anywhere. I feel strong about what's happening there and the historical track record. Then you have Dallas-Fort Worth is one of the strongest markets in the entire United States, not going anywhere, great employment. And then you move to where this property is actually located in Allen, Texas. And then we're getting really excited because the Northeast part of Dallas is one of the fastest growing parts of Dallas. Allen McKinney specifically is among the fastest growing uh, submarkets in Texas period. And it's grew by 13% over the past five years. It has some of the lowest unemployment compared to the national average. The national average for unemployment is 3.4%. Well, unemployment in Allen, Texas is 0.6%. And then you have a very strong median household income in Allen of 120,000, which is about twice the median national average. And we're seeing rental rates of about $2,260 a unit. It responded incredibly well in COVID. You know, we saw 23.57% of rent growth coming off of the COVID pause, as well as it has an incredibly low vacancy rate. And as you'll see, as we dig in, that's because it's just a very desirable place to live with low crime and great schools. And it's in the north part of Dallas where there's you know, a number of Fortune 1000 and Fortune 500 companies. They, you know, every single one of these names on here, I think we all recognize. Um, so there is a good, strong job base, which is one of the core metrics that we go after, which is good schools, good income, good job and income growth. Awesome, and let's dive into the property. So, as you can see here in this upper right-hand corner picture, 301 Greenville is located in an A-plus school district. It's literally right next to Allen High School. And if you know Texas and you know Texas um, high school and high school footballs, that is an incredible, incredible high school. And so people are moving into this area who want to be in Allen, who want to send their kids into the Allen School District and can't necessarily afford to buy and or they're just waiting to buy as they get settled in. And so it's attracting a lot of families. Um, within three to five miles of 
the apartment itself, the median income is about 111,000. And there's about 68,000 daytime employment. So lots and lots of businesses in and around this area, lots and lots of employment, great strong income and a great school, which all make for a good recipe for a nice, safe, clean place to live and a real high quality tenant base who's willing to pay and can afford to pay the rent increases that we are looking at in our business plan over the next three years. Okay, cool. The next thing we love about the property is the recent CapEx. So we love light value add deals. A lot of the heavy lifting has already been done by the current ownership, which is about $4.8 million that they spent. And as you can see here, a lot of it was spent on doing the heavy lifting to bring up the exteriors because they were pretty dilapidated and to bring up and build a brand new clubhouse, which they built from the ground up. Oops. New signage, pool, landscaping, a brand new fitness center that went in, and then just generally cleaning up all the amenities, and then all the interior unit renovations that have already been done. You can see some of that beautiful work here. Exterior amenities, there's two swimming pools, laundry, a pet park, coffee bar, bike racks, spacious green courtyards. It's on almost 13 acres worth of real estate. There's a tennis court, there's package lockers for like Amazon delivery, and again, a brand new fitness center. There's a couple more pictures. This is that brand new leasing office that they put in. Here's what it looks like on the inside. And then here's what the unit renovations are looking like. So beautiful, clean, modern, right? Hardwood floors throughout, stainless steel appliances, quartz countertops, beautiful, shaker cabinets with new handles, some of the new boxes, as well as new backsplash, fireplaces inside of the units, nice light gray. So just a really beautiful look. And this is what we intend to carry through the entire renovation plan. As you'll see, there's still you know 58 units or so that need to be uh, renovated. Uh, the other thing that we love about this is garden style apartments right so we're talking one to three story walk-ups with lots of green space and space for amenities are now no longer allowed to be built in allen texas part of the reason being is in a growing community like allen you know 13 acres is a lot of space that it takes up and more of what you're seeing being built there is podium style infill type projects uh, in order to limit the footprint that a lot of these multifamily uh, apartments are actually taking up. So we love that because it's super attractive for families and people with pets who tend to be really good uh, renter base. So we are under contract and closing on this property for $44.8 million. We actually, as of a couple of days ago, we're able to get a price reduction of $3 million, which was huge. So we were under contract at 48 million. We're now under contract at 44.8 million. And we are raising $19,660,000 for this deal. We intend on holding the property for three to five years. And we are going in with an occupancy of 98%. But the highlight is, there's incredible delta to be had on this deal between the current market rents, or excuse me, the current in-place rents and the current market rents, as well as there's still 58 remaining units where we're gonna be able to increase the rent significantly to get close to you know, three to $400 rent bump per unit. As I alluded to, the primary strategy is to renovate the remaining 58 units, as well as improve the rents uh, as we do lease trade outs over the next couple of years. And then we're gonna add in some additional um, amenities and um, some covered parking and things like that to enhance the property, to give us more ways and more levers to improve the NOI. Um, but all in all, we, you know, we're only gonna be spending around $1.7 million or so $1.4 million or so in order to complete the renovation plan, which is great because it's a short-term hold. We're not gonna be holding on to it for seven to 10 years. And we're just carrying the momentum off of the last operator. Our projected uh, budget, our sources and uses are here, you know, in totality, all in, 
our cost is going to be about 51 million 500,000 and that breaks down to about 31 million in debt and about 19.6 million in equity Our business plan, it's easier to see over on the right-hand side over here, is a mixture of interior and exterior coat, uh, scope, about $1.4 million. We're gonna be spending around 22,000 or so, which I'll break this out here in a sec, per unit to keep up with the beautiful interior renovations that you've already seen. And then spending about another 69,000 or so to bring more covered parking spaces, some more fence patios, and uh, fix up some of the asphalt to just complete the entire renovation plan on the property. Here's that breakout. <clears throat> so on the interior renovation, the classic one ones, there's about 14 units remaining unrenovated. We'll spend about $18,100, but that will return about $354 per unit per month or about 23% increase. And on the two twos, we'll be spending closer to 24, but that'll equate to about a $600 rent premium. So in totality on average, just on the 58 unrenovated units, we'll be able to see about a 25% increase or $556 on average. So that's super exciting. And that, a big part of that is just the Texas Allen market in general, because it is such a high demand market. And as you'll see, as we go through, it's just being uh, under managed essentially. So here's a better high level example across the entire uh, unit blend, where you can see the lease trade outs versus the post renovation units. So you see all the one ones, the market rate rent is about $1,329. The unrenovated, unrenovated units are currently getting $975 and the renovated units are only getting $1,000. So on the lease trade outs and the renovations alone, there's you know two to $300. On the two twos, you can see that market rate rent is $1,755. And the unrenovated units are getting about 1135 and the renovated are getting 1405. So based off of what we're seeing on the current lease trade outs, it's gonna be very easy for us to be able to push the rents up another you know, 600 to $350 on the two twos and uh, putting us right on par with the market where our comp set comes in. So you can see our projected rents versus our competition. So funny enough, Presidio, these are good friends of ours that on this property. And uh, if you know the property and you compare that to the subject property at 301, it doesn't even come close as it currently stands. Um, and they're getting on average $1,631 a unit while 301 is getting 1,524. So we feel very confident that um, just finishing out the business plan and trading out the leases along with all of the space amenities and location of the property is going to afford us uh, it's going to make it easy for us to be able to improve the rents over time and execute the light value add business plan in totality by renovating the 58 units capturing the loss the lease and the other income on a three-year hold we think there's about 18 million dollars of new value to be created on this property um, simply by just taking over, running the business plan and finishing what's been there. So that to us is very exciting. So when you stack, why real estate? Why now? Why Dallas? Why Allen? And why this property? Uh, that's the answer right there. Okay, so how does that break out the financial highlights? So as it stands in year one, we're anticipating a total income on the property of about $3.4 million, which you can see here. Over the course of three years, as we trade out leases, natural rent growth, and we continue to renovate those units, we're going to be able to drive that to about 4.6 million, and then simultaneously be able to drive down some of our OPEX expenses, which leads to an increase in net operating income from about 2.1 million to about 3 million. 
or in other words, cash flow from about 283,000 to about 895,000, which there'll be more details on this. If you guys wanna see a more detailed breakout of the, of the pro forma that'll be included in the deal room, we're happy to share that with you. So if you are considering investing in this asset, we are uh, requesting a $100,000 minimum investment and on that $100,000, we are giving a preferred return of 7%. We're projecting to hold for three to five years. And that should equate to somewhere between 14 to 25% annualized return, a 13 to 21% target internal rate of return, anywhere from 1.6 to 2.3x multiple on equity. Uh, reminder, this is a 506c offering. So there are a few steps as you decide to invest, which would be to go into the deal room and self-accreditate, which all those steps will be included for you. You can also walk through that with Brad Penley, who is responsible for all capital development and investor relations. Um, and then um, your next steps from that point are to just wire over the funds and officially secure your spot in the deal. Um, but to break that out another way, we have stressed the deal across our exit cap. So the cap rates in Allen, Dallas alone, but Allen are very, very strong and continue to remain strong. And so even if we were to sell this in three years at a 4.75 cap, which would be significantly higher um, than where the market is at today, um, we're still anticipating a 13.8% annualized return. And so how do, we, how do we exit the deal in three years? Those look like a refinance, a sale, or a 1031. Um, at this point, it's, it's a good time to just point out, as you can see over here on the right-hand side, the preferred return is paid in accrual format. So there is no cash flow distributions scheduled for this until the refinance or the sale in three to five years. But based off of everything that we've talked about, the short hold, the light value add on this deal, we feel very confident that uh, everyone watching this will feel good about getting you know, anywhere from a 1.6 to 2x return on their money over the next three years. Additionally, as an investor, you're gonna be able to participate in the cost segregation or the bonus depreciation, which is passed through to all the investors. So we do plan post-close to complete a a cost segregation and pass on all the bonus depreciation through down the K1s on year one. So even though you're not getting cash flow, you will be getting the depreciation to offset that and offset your uh, passive and active income. Awesome, so next steps. We are officially opening up funding to make your commitment on August 8th. So today is the 6th. That means two days from now, which would be Monday. August 8th, the deal room will be set up and you can start committing your funds. And then we're closing all funds by August 19th because we are planning on closing on August 31st. We've already been under contract on this deal for close to 60 days. And we're in the final stretches to get this deal over the line. So if you would like to participate, you can contact brad at thegrowthview.com and or you can go directly to our website where you can hit the deal room and you can set up your account and then you can get instant access to the offering memorandum as well as all the paperwork and the private placement memorandum. I would appreciate you guys taking the time. I will be sending this out so that everybody can watch it. Feel free to speed me up if I'm talking a little bit slow. And if you have any questions, I'm also happy, happy to help. You can contact me directly, Samson, S-A-M-S-O-N at thegrowthview.com. Thanks.